Our family's coming back. <laughs> Craziness. Come on. All right, they're coming. Ooh, I see pictures now. I never saw that before. Cynthia Bazin, Lisa. What is that? Marissa Bennett. Oh, I'm seeing y'all pictures. I've never seen pictures up here before. Now I get to see your beautiful faces. Look at Christina and Tarina and Jay and Dahlia, Tamara, Katrina, CW. Ah, something happened. Like they just upgraded my site. <laughs> I'm seeing all y'all beautiful faces. Oh, look at Evangelist Melinda, Jasmine, Angie Martin, Gilda, Vanessa, Natasha, Yvette, Marissa. She looks cute. Uh, I think that says Anthony Lucas, Belinda Perry, Terry Brinson. Y'all coming back on? I didn't. I not before it would just show your names, but for some reason I'm seeing. I don't know if this is y'all Facebook pictures or what, but I'm excited about it. Um, here's the site. I'm going to ask somebody to type it up there for me. It's suzhoward.wixsite.com slash Suzanne Howard. Now, I'm going to put it up on Facebook, but I know uh, Cynthia Bazin and Anya had it. But again, it's suzhoward.wixsite.com. And then backslash Suzanne Howard. I'm gonna post it up there for you. And um, because uh, I'm a working woman, I'm gonna do it right now as I talk because that's how I get things done. I don't wait. I believe keeping your word, being a man and woman of your word, is very important. And if there you go, Anya has it up on Periscope. S U Z Howard dot Wixsite dot com backslash Suzanne Howard. I'm going to post it on my Facebook page right now. It's going up right now for all my Facebook people. There it is. It's up there. When you go to my page, you'll see it. It has a picture of me and it has my name, but the link above is the actual link. Please go in and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe so we can keep in touch. I can send you some, some beautiful things. Um, and I'm telling you, we got a we got a great year ahead of us. We oh my God, we haven't even gotten started. Yet. I'm just doing this talking and sharing. You know why? Because it's beginning to be the end, but the beginning of something grateful. <laughs> Y'all coming back up? Awesome, good. So make sure you register. Um, let's see. I think that's all I had for you tonight. I needed to make sure that you really, really register. And let me open my lesson back up. Flip back my pages now i had given you a little assignment nothing too serious well it's actually majorly serious um i'm getting notifications that you are already going in and registering so thank you um uh, your homework assignment if you were able to get it done uh to tell me how what is going on with our current presidency um and um the immigrants and building the wall and all that stuff tell me how um, me too, Miss Morris. Tell me how it is prophetically parallel to what could be going on with the church, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Anybody have anything to share? How is it a comparison to what's going on spiritually, prophetically? If anyone want to share. Y'all too scared. Oh, Facebook coming back in. Y'all got kicked off. Lord have mercy. Back. He says back. Facebook coming back in. Y'all jumping on. Yep, people are rebelling. That's good, Nicole. He is on target. Uh-oh. Against leadership. Mm-hmm. Welcome, Yvonne Toro. People against leadership. Yep. Hey, Kim Hicks Davis. They're coming back up on Facebook Live. 
hearts and thumbs and everything with them. Go ahead, Elder Denise. You can't get into the kingdom if you have the wrong king. That's You're never late, Yvonne. You're never, ever late. Mm, kind of, but I wouldn't use the word discriminating against. Because I believe our king really takes our kingdom first and has, has put things in place to protect us from people coming in the back door. You remember there is a a natural a naturalization process in order to get into the kingdom of God. We talked about it briefly last night. There is a process of naturalization just like it is when you get ready to come into America. Okay, that's good, Lili. So Okay, no problem, Lydia. Um, so, you know, when you look at it in the sense of backdoor people trying to get in, and that's the same way that um, our kingdom teaches us, our, 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 our kingdom constitution teaches us that people are trying to come in through the back door, and, and, and he doesn't allow that. There's borders up to get into the kingdom of God. Yes, he told everybody to come, but he told us how to come. Go ahead, Miss Ross. Those without a sincere relationship will be left out. There's a process to get into the kingdom. Go on, Gilda. Gilda gets it. Gilda says, the president is putting the U.S. first. God's people putting God first again. You know, we, we're, we, we're, not be, we're not able to see and hear what God is doing because we're not seeing and hearing what the spirit is saying. We're looking all that this from a natural sense. We're trying to defend other people. And we're trying to do that. And that's great. But that's like Christians always running out to save the world and not taking care of their own people. Now, I believe all this border stuff is going to change. I believe that his administration is getting in his seat. He's keeping his promises to all those people that voted him in, in which he should. But I believe once he's in his seat and gets his office going, all that's going to change. I do believe that. I believe it's going to change. I don't believe it's going to stay in. However, there should be order and protocol enter into any country, nation, kingdom. And even our heavenly kingdom has a constitutional way to enter in. And the word of God talks about, I think he even calls them thieves and robbers. Those that try to come into the back door. There's a way to enter in the kingdom. And when you enter in the right way, you get all the benefits of the kingdom. But you can't come in a back way and walk under a false Christianity and want to reap the same benefits that those who are really, they become naturalized in this kingdom. Am I making sense to anybody? So it may look rough to us in America, but only if we're seeing it through carnal eyes. If you look at it prophetically, God is speaking to the church and he's telling the church that there is a time where I am putting my bride first. My guards haven't been in place. My borders haven't been secure. The prophets secure the borders. My borders haven't been secure. Why? Because the prophets are so busy prophesying husbands and Lexuses and cars and jobs that the borders of the kingdom haven't been protected or preserved. Apostles aren't in place. Pastors doing 19 different assignments. The teachers are being told what to teach. The preachers are being told what to preach. The churches got clicks. They only let in. So you ever notice that some churches, they let the same preachers in every single year? The same one. We're supposed to be one family. But we only we have a list of our buddies. We only let our buddies in. And I'm hook you up. I'm gonna hook you up. It's not who has a word or who who's hearing from God. It's the hookup thing. And God is closing the borders. He's protecting his kingdom, and he's bringing his people to his attention. Thank you. I'm telling you, it's not. I'm telling you, it's not. See it with eyes and ears of the spirit, what the spirit has to say. And you will see that what is happening naturally in America under this president is exactly what God is doing and speaking to the church. 
The borders, go ahead, Pastor D. The borders of the kingdom are left unprotected. Hear the truth. Just had this conversation last night. That's right. Closing the borders. And this is what I would do. Let's just put it in the aspect of a church. If I was coming in and I was taking over a church, two things would go on. The first thing is I would shut down a lot of the activities that are going on because I need to get refreshed and acquainted to what I'm taking on. So I need to know what's going on. Who are my officers that are in charge over what positions in the church? I need to sit down with these officers to see what's going on in the different countries, to see, you know, what's the latest status with, with the, what, what, what we're in war with or, you know, what we're contending with, what our budget looks like. I would close everything down. Let me sit at my desk and just give me a little time, not a week, not two weeks. Give me a little time to figure out what we're going to do here. We may shift some position. We may bring some promotions. We may bring some people in and we may have to shut some people out. But give me a chance to get in my seat and get my office acquainted so that I can put things in process that needs to be put together. One thing I wouldn't do is if I left the church and there's a new leader in place, I would never go on talking to the sheep about what I feel about the new pastor. I have a problem with that with leadership. That's a problem. I might call that pastor and say, you know, I hear you shut down um, all of the Friday night youth nights. And I hear that um, you've shut down um, taking in new members. I hear that um, you put the, the Memorial Day picnic on hold. Um, I hear that um, we're not going to have... Um, uh, um, what is it? We're not going to have a church anniversary this year. I don't agree with it. And I just want to talk to you about it, but I would never go before the country that I'm no longer over and go against the new leader that's in place. That's, that's, that's bad. That's bad. Now we could talk, we could hammer it out, but never in front of the sheep. Did y'all hear me? Never in front of the sheep. Kings don't even handle things that way. They don't address the, the kingdom that's under a new king. They speak king to king. Shepherds, shepherd to shepherd. You learn that in business. So, you know, I'm not mentioning names on purpose. I'm not mentioning any political parties on purpose because what I want you to see is to see it and hear it of what the spirit is saying to us. Look at what's going on in America and figure it out prophetically to what God is doing and saying to the kingdom of God. And I think you will have more peace and, 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 not see it in the flesh and, and uproar and protest and everything else. I think you might see it a little bit differently because it's time for the borders to be protected. And I'm not talking in America. Okay. I'm reading your comments. That's right. D Davis. Yep. Y'all getting kicked out a lot tonight, huh? You know, it's not a popular, it's not a popular thing that I have to say. But I'm, I'm telling you, and I can only say this because I heard from the Lord over a year ago. If I did not, I would be quiet and listening and learning. The teacher is, is never greater than the student. I can be a student at any time, and I know when it's my position to teach. And when I've heard from the Lord, I can prophesy it, I can teach it, I can preach it. And when I have not, I have no problem being a student and learning from those that have heard so again, let's be prophetically minded people and let's pay attention, write it out, look at the news, see what's going on, what's being said and compare, hey, Apostle Hester, and compare it to, um, congratulations, sir, on many great things, <laughs> my God, and, um, and just compare it, a prophetic timeline, could God be doing this to the church? Is this a reflection of what's going on in the church? They sure are not, Charmaine. I'm talking to those on Periscope. They are not. You're right. Hey, Troy Oliver, and you are right. 
Lady Latanya. Same here. Same here, Sky Redding. I agree. Hey, Benny May. So y'all hear what I'm saying? Absolutely. Good. Good. Okay. I just want you to, you know, you don't, you don't have to agree with me. But don't look at things one way, especially if we're spiritual people. You, you have to take the time to look at it spiritually. When, when you look at the news, don't look, look at the news from a natural standpoint. See what it is that God is saying to the church. The news, whether we want to admit it or like it or not, is a prophetic portal. And it's a shame when prophets have to get their revelation from the news. So if you're going to look at the news, look at it in the aspect of what is God saying to the church. You have to parallel it or like a mirror, turn it around, but parallel it. All right. Somebody said if something's going on in the natural, something is going on in the spiritual. Hey, good. All right. I know I gave you that last night and um, we kind of moved on from there and we were going to pick up at... Um, uh, ooh, that's a good spot right there, but I need to back it up to remind you. Look at the news aspect, what God is saying to the church. Yep. Signs of the times. Okay. And see, the problem that we have here in America, we, we, are, we haven't been under a kingdom. We haven't been under a king, so we don't understand how things are set in place. We are so d democratic that we don't even realize, you know... We just got so much liberties that we, we can't even understand what it is to be under leadership properly. We just, we just spoiled brats and all we want to do is whine and protest. And I'm telling you, it is what it is and it's going to be what it's going to be. But we need to know what it is so we can know where to be, how to prophesy it, how to keep the church stable, how to guard our borders. Okay. Good. You're all with me. So just like what's going on in America, when I was speaking last night, I was paralyzing on um, that uh, mm -hmm. not many people are going to make it in and keep their citizenship in the kingdom. All right. That was a good view. I couldn't catch your name. It was V something, but that was a very good view. Um, and, and people are going to be dep deported from the church. See, there never has been a time really where we've put people out of the church unless it was um, immoral or unrighteous behavior. But there's coming a time now when we're beginning to see who have gone through the naturalization process in the kingdom and those who came in through the back door. And those have been the disruptors in the church. That's right, Jeanette Zacks. Those have been the disruptors in the church. Those are the ones that have been causing a great falling away. And this is why we're dealing with what we're dealing with now. Um, but sadly, not many are going to make it. There's people who are leaving the kingdom and trying to come back in. And they're going to find out that they left and they're not going to be able to get back in. And I know people are going to think I'm crazy. So you can't just take this little snippet and think you can have a whole debate and comment. You're going to have to talk to me about this thing to hear it. And on this thing here tonight, I don't have the time. It's already 9.55, but I'm telling you, check it out yourselves. Become people of knowledge and wisdom and spirit and prophecy. Check out what's going on. God is telling us what he's doing with the church. He's securing his bride. He came to set his kingdom up here on the earth. He came to, to um, give us the kingdom here, to occupy until he comes. And just like the naturalization process that someone has to go through in America is the same process you have to enter into the kingdom. Even to the point where Nicodemus said, how do I be born again? And Jesus actually gave him the steps. And if we ever teach on the kingdom, if you come to our place, we can teach it. We may do something online separately from soul detox. But there is a process and there's, there's a way to come in to the kingdom. And it's not through the back door. And yes, we should help. Absolutely, we should help. However, there is a way that we are supposed to do it. Um, th this heavenly kingdom came to make us free from our past, just like everyone else is crossing over, changing our cultures, bringing some of it in, taking on a new culture, bringing in some traditions, um, keeping up the new traditions to take us from our hurts, our pains, that whole dream 
the, the, the house with the white picket fence. What is it? The two and a half kids or are we down to one and a half kids now? And the one car. And to walk in the light of our citizenship. But sadly, not many people make it in because they get deported or lose their citizenship. He came to set up his kingdom here in the earth through us. Jesus told us that we have an enemy and he told us the model war plan of our enemy. And that is in John 10 and 10. It is our enemy's rules of engagement. Our enemy comes, but to steal to kill and to destroy. Christianity is not intended to be one of the world's major religions. It was not intended to be a world major religion. It, but rather it was supposed to be a relationship with God the Father and a citizenship with Jesus the King. Jesus the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We've been, we've been bamboozled by thinking that our book is a religious book instead of a kingdom constitution. We've been bamboozled to think that we're a part of a church that has no um, more power but many clicks and connections as much as a, a Masonic Lodge or some of those other crazy places. We, the church is a campus. It's an extension of, of our naturalization process when we enter in the kingdom of God. That's why we should have our borders raised a little bit higher in the church. There should be some inspection of fruit before we allow people to join the kingdom of God. But nope, hear one message, come on up to the altar, give your life to Christ, you're saved, you're on one message? I just got, matter of fact, I just got a little remorse. I'm not even repentant yet. I'm not even convicted yet. But in Acts 2 tells us the whole process of entering into the kingdom of God. That's what he's doing with America, whether we like it or not. He said, there's a process and you have to follow the process and you can't come in through the back door, but we do it in the church all the time. Why? Because we want to make church great again. We want to expand our borders. We want to fill up our churches and we have people that have come in through the back door and not through the process that is necessary to know that we really have citizens in the kingdom of God. You know, I showed in our church and again, I'm not promoting church. This has nothing to do with my church. These soul detox teaching. We watch the naturalization process on a Sunday morning, visitors and all. The questions they have to ask, half of us who were born in America could not answer the questions that were asked to citizens coming in to be an American citizen. They knew more about our country than we did growing up in it. We didn't even realize that they have to um, swear that they would bear arms to defend their country. How many Christians will bear arms to defend the kingdom? At any moment, they said, if you are called to a civil servant position, that you acknowledge that you will have to take that civil servant position. There's rules to enter into a nation, a country, or a kingdom. And we're letting people in with borders, with, with no prophets guarding the borders. So people are coming into the church and messing things up from the front to the back. That's why we don't have the power because we've been too low in having our borders secured that we've let everyone in. And now what we have now is um, we need apostles and prophets to do an inspection in these churches to find out if we really got citizens in here or we got people who have entered in illegally reaping of the benefits that were intended for the citizens of our God. I don't have the time. I'm going to need the time, but I don't have it tonight. So he told us what our enemy comes to do. Christianity is not intended to be a major world religion. Can you put that up for me, please? Christianity, Christianity was not intended to be a major world religion. It was not. We made it that way. And I can tell you who did it. And I can tell you when it started. And I can tell you what this whole scam was and how they're still operating today. But that is not who we were supposed to be. Christ did not die for a religious book or religious people. He did not. Thank you. Thank you. I see somebody putting it up. When people refuse to live by faith, they live in fear. When people refuse to live by faith, they live in fear. And that's how religion got started. When people refuse to live by faith, they live in fear. And that is how religion got its start. 
People even today are afraid of trusting God and the power of his love. And they usually will resort to some type of form or formula instead of trusting God. That's how religion got its breeding ground. In fact, religion is defined as a system, set of rules, expectations, or regulations. Religion is defined as any system, set of rules, expectations, or religion. Now, that's not bad because we need that in the church. We need a system. We need set of rules. We need expectations. We need regulations. We have this on our job. We have this in school. We have this in our higher education centers. We have this in our civil servant offices. Systems and set of rules and expectations and regulations is not bad. They should be clearly defined and written out as well. It's, that's not bad at all. The problem is that God's promises, that God promises acceptance in return for our effort. That's what we think. Religion tells us that God's promises are only accepted in return for our human effort. Okay, y'all still with me. Thank you. I've even heard that some scholars have argued that the root of the word religion means return to bondage. If we only knew how free we really were, we wouldn't feel like we have to go and sin and cheat and, 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 and lie and steal. And we would have to do all this stuff because we do it because we're living in such a system of rules and regulations that it's almost like Adam and Eve. Don't bite the apple. We're going to bite the apple. When you realize that you don't need that apple, you're not, you're not twisted and tainted or tempted by these things. But we're so held down in a religious system that we think the world is blessed. And we're willing to give up our citizenship for a world that doesn't even follow its own orders and decrees. They don't even know what, what they're fighting for right now. Rather than progressing to a spiritual freedom, man-made religious rules leads us straight to a spiritual prison. Where people die lonely and godless. I can't tell you anymore. I've got some wonderful leaders in my church that have, have experienced this with their own eyes, watching some people that they know very closely, that they love great people. We're not saying anything's wrong with them. Great people. We talked about that last night. You can be good people. You can be rich people. You can be honest people without the Holy Spirit. But there is a reason to have the Holy Spirit. You will not get to heaven being rich, great, or nice. But when you are involved in religion, you think it's all about works. It puts you in a spiritual prison where people die a godless and lonely life. That's why when people meet y'all who have, who've had some touch of, of the kingdom of God, they meet you and they, they, they're like, man, I'm saved, but something's different about you. Cause you're not in bondage anymore. You know, I was early on in my ministry, I was attacked majorly on the gender thing. So I really had to study. Did Christ really call me to preach as a woman? Can a woman lead a church? Can a woman lead a ministry? You know, um, do I, am I supposed to give my husband a, a title and a position just because he's married to me? Even if he says he's called to be my husband, he's not called to be in any position in the church. What he says through prayer, what the Lord is saying, you know, all the people coming in and they're attacking and attacking, you know, so it forced me in a good way. It could have been a hurt thing and had me run the other way, but instead it caused me to study the word of God to find out, am I allowed to preach? Am I allowed to, to shepherd and pastor? Am I allowed to, or do I only have to have a women's ministry? Has God called me to, to um, shepherd his church and have women and men? I had to study these things because the attacks came in early. And then this was another second major attack. The gender thing still comes, but I'm, I'm on that thing. I ain't even worry about it. I got it. Shuts it down in Jesus name. But the other thing is this um, um, Hebrew Israelite and black Hebrew Israelite thing that we have going on here. That these, these people are trying to take us back to the law, the law that we got delivered from. Oh, I had one come to my church and for a year he wouldn't even leave. I believe God sent him. Hmm. I'm telling you, he wouldn't leave. He pounded me and pounded me and pounded me in the word until he caused me to know that word so well and how the words, it is finished. 
is so you could preach a year on it is finished and it would kill these fake arguments these these pseudo religious can't eat this can't do this church this day none of this that day this got to quake that got to shake you know um we can't eat this we can't eat that but not keeping the whole law and the whole sum of this 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 fight that they want to give us is not just against the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it's against our credentialing as citizens in the kingdom of God. Because when they read the word, the word is clear in the Old Testament that if you are going to obey any law of the old covenant, the former covenant, if you're going to obey any of it, you have to obey all of it or you are guilty of it all. You cannot obey no pork, you know, no shellfish, church on Sundays, I mean church on Saturdays, and then um, not have intercessory prayer. Pick which holidays that you want to obey. He says in the word clearly that if you do not obey all of them, you are guilty against all of them. So how could they come and tell us? You see, you got to study the word. And that's why our soul goes against religion. When we become a part of a religious process, our soul becomes religious. And then you join a, a, um, an apostolic, um, a real one, not, the, the, not the, the doctrinal one, the real one. You get under apostles and prophets and you begin to find out that I'm, I, that's the word that keeps coming. We've been bamboozled for a long time, fried in religion. And then when you get under a, 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 a pure kingdom, prophetic, apostolic, you know, movement church, it takes us sometimes years to unwind the religion from your soul. That's why we call um, the, the, the old covenant or the, the old commandments, um, if you will, we call it soul seeking laws. It was about the soul. And this dispensation, this new covenant, this new testament is about the spirit. Am I making sense to anybody? The whole law, James 2 and 10. Thank you, Pastor D. The whole law. You can't celebrate one thing and pick. You can't pick. If you decide to do that, and you that's your option. If you do, you better follow the whole law. And he talks about having candles burning and intercessory. And it's a whole group of this stuff that we couldn't keep then. But we have people taking Christians out of their citizenship, going back into their old former country, into laws, rules, and regulations. Then you got those that come to the back door. They want the grace that's on us, but they still want to be up under their own traditions, cultures, and customs. Those are the ones that's coming in through because our borders aren't being secured. I'm making sense. All right. That's all it counts. It doesn't even make sense for me to go on. If we need to work one line, then let's work that one line. I don't even want to go on for an hour if I'm not making any sense to you. That's right, Cherie. And we've got people, at least I'm experiencing it, people leaps and bounds running over the edge to jump into this stuff. I got people in my own ministry. That you don't have to eat pork. It's not good for you. It's your choice. I eat some. I'm not going to say I don't eat pork. I love bacon, but I don't eat breakfast, so I don't have bacon a lot. But, you know, I'll have ham on a sandwich or, uh, or something like that. And I'm saved. And I can bless that meal and enjoy that meal. But then you got people who, uh, they won't eat pork. Oh, no, the Bible says, Bible says don't eat pork. But where are you when it's time to celebrate uh, Hanukkah? Where are you when it's time to uh, celebrate the new year. We used to do it in September till I found out it makes you guilty of the whole law if you don't follow all of it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hey, Linda. You know, we're talking about securing the borders today. And we're talking about how what's happening here, whether we like it or not in America. America is under this oppression, if you will. Because of God is speaking to his kingdom. 
Okay, Jeanette, you better go on. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth through Jesus Christ. Securing the borders of our kingdom. All right, let me hit a couple more and then I'm going to let you go because it's already 11 after and we don't go this late. Um, an example of toxic religion in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul raised up a region of people in Galatia. He empowered them to care for the church, then repeated the process in other towns. And that's where we get, you know, church plant and we get all that from. Hey, Steve C Capers. That's right. Very good on Periscope. I read you. Um, and he empowered the church, which is what we are starting to do again nowadays. He has empowered the church to care for the church. He made leaders and then he moved on to other towns and they would come back around and check in on their churches again. Galatia was one such community where Paul helped start a church. And after he moved on to another region, he was devastated to discover that another group that, what do they say that the Judaizers, I can't talk tonight, had followed him to Galatia. They followed the works that Paul was doing, followed him to Galatia and started adding their own rules to the purity of the model of citizenship or Christianity, if you will, that Paul had taught in Galatia. So they went in and tried to redo with Paul's own disciples. But listen, let me tell you how they did it. And this is how it's still happening today. They told the church in Galatia, what Paul taught you was good. Jesus is a good start. You hear that? Jesus is a good start. But to really be right with God, you need Jesus and you need to be circumcised. That's another major part we need to talk about. In other words, they believe you still had to obey the whole Jewish law. So let me ask you this. For all those that come in and, you know, this is what the Old Testament says. You know, I'm an original uh, um, Jewish Hebrew Israelite. I'm, I'm the original and whatever we want to come up with. And we don't want to accept what Jesus has done on the cross is finished. That we want to belittle all his suffering, all his death into um, he just made us where we can have grace. But we're still under the law at the same time. Belittling what he had gone through. Belittling the sacrifice. Belittling his kingship. Because they don't want to accept the full gospel of Jesus Christ. Amazing. So then they want to pick and choose what they want to follow and what they want to obey. Do you know one of the commandments was also that the men had to be circumcised? So we're going to deal with that in our closing. What a way to close. Could you imagine today me closing out our service and asking those who want to become citizens of the kingdom of Jesus Christ and joining the local, local outposts of the Apostles' House. And for all the men that come up, you have to be circumcised. Hey, evangelists. Um, so be very careful of, of people taking you back to soulish religions. Soulish religions. This is all spiritual. You need the Spirit of God in order to understand things of the Spirit. That's clear in the scripture. Don't let people take you back to a soulless law. It, it doesn't work. But they even tried to make it sound sweet. And they told Apostle Paul's church that Jesus was a good start. But now you need to obey the law. And this is the thing about it for us today. That the law was never even given to us. It was never given to the Gentiles. Isn't that amazing? It was given to the Jews. And we used to be able to have that argument with them until we found out now they're saying that they're getting their DNA tested online and they found out that some of them are actually the original Jewish people. Well, all right, just make sure you obey all the law then. Bye in Jesus' name. <laughs> but Apostle Paul had to fight these people against their false teaching. And that's what he penned in his letter to the church that he loved. And he said, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who caused you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel. That's in Galatia 1, 6 through 7, which isn't the gospel at all. The gospel is, it is finished. That is the gospel. It is fulfilled. Come 
run in. There's no more behind the veil. The veil has been torn and we are all are free to come in. And Galatia 1, 6, and 7, the Greek word translated here as to pervert. It means to taint, to corrupt, to distort, to poison. So they didn't have to uproot what Apostle Paul was doing. They didn't have to destroy what Jesus Christ had started and left onto the apostles. All they had to do was taint it a little bit. I, we just did Easter eggs here at my granddaughter on Friday night just because they were selling in the grocery store and she wanted it. Okay, yeah, I'm guilty. So we put a little bit of the food coloring in the water. The water was still water, but now it was tainted. It was still water. You could see through it when it was just water, but when we tainted it with color, now it was distorted. It was fresh drinking water before. It still is fresh drinking water, but now it has a poison in it. Do you get what I'm saying to you? And this is what they try to tell you today. So you have to watch people who minister to your soul versus ministering to you through his spirit. Well, I'm done with that for tonight. We've got to go. We fought the prince and the power of the airways again. That's why I don't like dealing with religion. That's why I get on here and I deal with the soul and the Holy Spirit because these are the things that are going to make the difference. Because when you have your soul in the right place and when you have the Holy Spirit, we don't have to fight these type of arguments with the church because you didn't come in through the back door. Our borders are protected and you come in the right way. We can inspect the fruit that is in the house and we can determine that it is of Christ. We don't have to worry about Christian terrorists and Christian terrorism and people leaving bombs in the church symbolically metaphorically speaking destroying our church uprooting our teaching coming against a religion preaching against apostles and prophets that's what it does when your borders aren't secure and you have people coming in with fake naturalization or coming in without any naturalization papers absolutely good i'm glad it was good well, good night to you. We got one more night tomorrow night that will more than likely be taking place in my office. So I wanted to have my, my, my last night that I could here because this is where it all started. I love you all. I thank you again for your time. I don't take it lightly. I know that air time is expensive and I don't take it lightly to have your ear. So thank you. You can inbox any questions to me. Uh, we keep it real. We keep it respectful. And um, tomorrow we're going to deal with something really, really good going back onto the soul and we'll end our uh, week until next Monday night at nine. Don't forget to go on and subscribe. I need your information. And also, um, if you want to inbox as well, if you could tell me, um, do you prefer Monday or Tuesday? From what I can remember from seeing on the screen, Monday night seemed to be the chosen night. But could you send what night you um, you you think would work for your schedule? And whoever has the majority wins. And that's the night we will do it once a week going forward. But until then, tomorrow night at nine, grace and peace. I love you all. And remember, stay with Christ. It took you too hard to get there. It took you too long to believe, to give it up over that. Do not allow people to minister to your soul. You have to be ministered by the Spirit. Amen. I love you all. Thank you. There you go. Anya's putting the screen name up on um, Periscope, and it is on the Facebook page. Please, please go in and subscribe just to put your name in so we can keep in touch. Love you too, Elder Ross. Thank you, sir. All my brothers and my sons that are on here. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night. Good night, Angela. Good night, Belinda Perry. Good night, CW. Holla.